You know, you can learn to play the hippest jazz lines in the world, but when you throw in a blues lick, that's when the audience goes, yeah. This is the first of a series of videos about improvising on the blues, which is a typical starting point for people learning to improvise. But the blues is also an essential element. Some might say it's the central element of jazz. The blues is based on a very simple form. That's why it's a good place to start. Now, over the years, jazz musicians have figured out ways to make the blues more complex, but if you lose sight of the simplicity, you've really lost touch with the blues. This is basic level stuff that I'm talking about, but simple is not necessarily easy, and I've known a lot of jazz students, I might even say the majority of jazz students, who develop advanced ability as improvisers by the time they leave university, but who cannot play a convincing blues. So whether you're a beginner or advanced, it'll do you good to get in touch with the basic elements of the blues. Now, there are lots of variations, but most blues have a couple of things in common. They're typically 12 bars long. They start on the one chord and they go to a four chord in the fifth bar. Now, to me, without that four chord in the fifth bar, I'd have a hard time identifying it as a blues. Outside of those chords, there's a lot of variations that jazz musicians use, but we're going to focus on the most basic chord progression, which consists of only three dominant seven chords built on the one, the four, and the five. Today, we're talking about a B flat blues, so the three chords are going to be B flat seven, E flat seven, and F seven. To remember the order that the chords appear in, think about the 12 bars as three four bar segments. Segment one has four bars of the one chord. Segment two has two bars of the four chord and two bars of the one chord. Segment three has one bar of the five, one bar of the four, and two bars of the one. Now, typically when you repeat the chorus, you put a five chord in the last bar as a turnaround. So the first thing I like to do with students is to see if they can hear where they are in the form by just listening to the chords. You listen and see how quickly you can figure out where you are in the progression. After you hear three segments, I'll play them again with the answers on the screen. Okay, so now we talk about improvising on this chord progression. For somebody who's new at this, the first and most obvious question is, what notes do I play? But before we think about that, think about this. The two most important aspects of music have nothing to do with what notes you play. They have to do with how you play them. Those aspects are sound, or tone quality, and time feel, or rhythm. If you've got some ability on your instrument, but you're new to jazz improvisation, well, don't discount the importance and the value of what you already bring to the table. It's better to play all the wrong notes with good sound and good time than vice versa. Plus, I would argue that if you play with good sound and good time, there are no wrong notes. This is where jazz improvisation is actually easier than written music, where there's only one right note at any given moment in time. In jazz, any note can be the right note, depending on how you play it and what you play afterwards. But it's certainly helpful to have some guidelines, and you're learning a language here, so we'll start with a foundation element of the blues language, the minor pentatonic scale. As the name implies, this is a five-note scale, and it consists of one, flat three, four, five, and flat seven. The pentatonic scale is different from most other scales in that it consists of whole steps and minor thirds rather than whole steps and half steps. Now, right off the bat, this makes it sound more like a jazz line than a scale. And it's interesting to note that one of the first scales an improviser learns also forms the basis for a lot of modern jazz vocabulary. Now, even if you've never improvised a note, there's a good chance you've already played this scale because the five black keys on the piano form an E-flat minor pentatonic scale. And that scale is the basis for a little tune that countless kids have played on the piano with their knuckles. The B-flat minor pentatonic scale is all you need to know to improvise quite effectively on the blues. In fact, it's more than you need to know. The first thing I ask a student to do is to play a full chorus using only one note, the root. Now, given the limited harmonic and melodic possibilities, most students resort to complex rhythms or jumping octaves, but it's not necessary and it's usually not effective. What you need to do is just to get in the groove and don't worry about playing a bunch of notes. 
On the second chorus, I'll give them one more note, say the minor third. On the third chorus, we'll give them one more note, and then a fourth, and then a fifth. Now we're going to add one more note to the minor pentatonic scale to turn it into a blues scale. Yeah! That note lies between the four and the five, so you could call it the sharp four or the flat five. In my mind, it would depend on which direction you're going. The flat five and the flat three are both called blue notes. There's a lot of expression possible with those notes, particularly if you bend them the way a vocalist might do. If there's one defining characteristic of the sound of the blues, it's the flat third of the minor pentatonic or blues scales played against the major third of the one chord. <laughs> 